Good morning, sixth grade social studies. Today we are continuing our conversation about ancient Greece. So we have already talked about the ancient Greek city-states, how they structured their societies, and also how the environment or the geography influenced the creation of those city-states. So what I want you to do now is first you're going to take a look at a video. So this is a YouTube video. I posted the link here for you. So I know sometimes that when you open my slideshows, it won't allow you to play videos that I uh, linked into the or embedded into the slide. So if it doesn't work for you that way, you can click this link here and I'll repost the link on Google Classroom for the do now, just in case that doesn't work for you. What you're going to do is in order to recap what we talked about uh, ancient Greek city-states, you're going to watch a brief four minute video clip about ancient Greek city-states. And while you're watching, I want you to consider the following questions and then answer them as you're watching the video. They are, how were Greek city-states different from larger empires, like larger empires like we talked about Mesopotamia or Egypt, and what were some of the major Greek city-states that we either talked about in the last activity from last class or that you see in the video itself. You should already know some things about both of these topics, so you can use what you already know from the lesson from last class as well as what you learned from this video like I said this is a recap of what we are already learned once you're done watching the video and answering the questions make sure as always that you post your answers to the questions in Google Classroom under the do now post and remember I'll keep reiterating this and underscoring this you need to do this it's part of the class and it's going to count towards your classwork grade and your participation grade so please 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 keep doing these questions they will only benefit you in the long run so our topic for today is a continuation of our discussion of ancient Greece we are going to talk about some conflict today specifically some conflict between the Greek city-states and the Persians who exist east of them in Asia so our topic for today is the Greco-Persian Wars. Now, the one thing I want to mention that isn't really important to know, but just a fun fact, a lot of the times in history, you'll see a hyphenated war where it has one place and the other place. It's basically just a war between the Greeks and the Persians. There have been uh, Persian-Roman wars. They make a lot of the war names literally the places that fought. So in the case of this war, there was the Greco-Persian War. Um, just a fun fact. Anyway, before we get into the Greco-Persian War, we have to f talk about why this conflict emerged. And also, we want to recap what we already know about Greek Greece itself before we get into any kind of interactions with anywhere else. So recap from the video as well as what you learned from last class, we know that ancient Greece, because of its geography and because of the interests of the people, it didn't make sense to create one large empire because, first of all, it'd be very difficult to govern because of the geography. It was hard to communicate and travel between different city-states due to the mountains and the hills, but also creating smaller governments for them allowed them to focus on their own needs their own interests that varied based on where they existed in ancient greece remember the northern city states who weren't necessarily on the coast of the mediterranean sea or the aegean sea had different desires had different needs and interests than city states like sparta or athens who were located on the coast of these seas where they could focus on something else like trading or fishing. So because of this, instead of creating one empire under one emperor or one king, they had little mini societies that were all Greek, but they all had their own separate independent governments. So because of this, not only did the ancient Greeks kind of stay to themselves but they really didn't want to interact with one another because they had their own society they didn't want to be bothered they didn't want to have any conflicts with anyone 
They just wanted to focus on building up their own state and being the strongest city-state in Greece. So each city, which we call city-state, was fiercely or very, very, very independent. They focused on their separate agendas and their interests. Now, just because they didn't interfere with one another's affairs didn't mean that they didn't speak at all. They didn't have any communication at all. They did trade with one another. They did do business with one another. So in that sense, financially, they did interact, but it was minimal. So because we know that the city-states were independent, they were independent city-states. They didn't want to do anything with anyone else. What ends up happening, and we will find out in this lesson, is very strange. Now, it's strange for many reasons, but we'll come to talk about what happens with the Greeks and the Persians in a few minutes. So, the key here is to remember that the city-states were independent. That means that they functioned by themselves. They didn't really interact with the other city-states except for financial reasons. And they had separate armies, separate governments, separate cities. They were all separate. Things began to change, however, because their eastern neighbor, the Persians, began to threaten their power. The Greeks are just chilling. They're minding their own business. They're, th they're doing pretty well for themselves. They're sustaining themselves. They're independent. They don't need help from anyone. And then all of a sudden, the Persians come knock, knock, knock. They're a problem. Now, because the Persians became a threat to the ancient Greeks. What ends up happening is something very interesting. But what I want you to consider first before we move forward with the story is what were some of the reasons that the ancient Greeks created city-states instead of uniting under one empire? So we touched on it a little bit in the do now and then just now with my lecture, but I want you to consider this question. Why create city-states, little city-states, instead of one large empire under one king or one emperor? So take a couple of minutes, answer the question in Google Classroom under the, under the Do Now and Pop Questions post, and then you can move forward with the lecture. I want to apologize. My allergies are terrible, terrible today. So that's why I'm sniffling and I look like I'm like crying. I'm not crying. My allergies are just very, very bad. So my apologies for my appearance. Anyway, answer the pop question and then you can move forward with the lecture. So ancient Greeks had their own city states, minded their own business, had their own, own little city state governments and all their own interests. However, the Persians were a growing threat. The Persians, as you see on the map here, is this green empire to the east of ancient Greece. So Greece is here, just past the Aegean Sea, you have the Persians. Now the Persians at one point in time were not that powerful. It was just a bunch of tribes, kind of like the Mongols actually. It was a bunch of little tribes and then they organized to create a strong army and then they decided we're going to try to take over the world. We want the most land because land equals power. The more land you have in the ancient era, the more power you had. So the Persians grew their army. They became pretty strong. They developed a pretty large empire in Eastern Asia. Rather, this would be Western Asia. I'm sorry, but they're in the East. So whatever. Anyway, so they created a pretty large empire and they wanted to expand more. What was going to stop them? The sea? Sea wasn't going to stop them. They have boats. So they were like, oh, well, we keep moving east, 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 east. And then they hit this city known as Iona, Ionia. Now, the Persians didn't think this would be a problem for them. The Ionians didn't really have a strong army. They weren't really a threat to the Persians. They were just like, oh, well, we're attached at the end here. Why don't we just sweep across the rest of Western Asia and conquer the Ionians? problem 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 they did not think that this would be a threat however the ancient greeks across the sea were like oh no the persians keep moving further west eventually they're going to reach greece so 
before that could happen, the Greeks had to act. Now, what ends up happening is that the Greek city-states were independent, right? But they were all like, OMG, Sparta, Athens, Olympia, Thebes, guys, like, I know we don't usually interact and we usually don't mingle, but you see the Persians over there? They're going to try to come conquer us. And if we don't unite and we don't join forces, we do not stand a chance. So the Persians kept pushing, pushing, pushing. The Greeks were like, guys, suit up. We got to unite. So that's what they do. Even though they were independent city-states with their own armies, their own governments, their own money, they decide to join forces stronger in numbers. Because if they didn't, they believed that the they didn't really stand a chance to the Persians who were growing in strength. So what ends up happening is very important. The Persians invade Ionia. The Greeks send some soldiers over to help the Ionians defend themselves. And this severely shocks and hurts the Persian army because they were not expecting this extra pushback from Greece. So because the Greeks were able to successfully help the Ionians, it kind of protected Greece for a little bit longer. They had more time to like get their resources together. They pushed back the Persians, but it wasn't a permanent solution. They knew that eventually the Persians were going to come for them, and they did. So what do the Greeks do? They unite and they join forces to defend Greece. All the city-states, even though they were independent, shared a common enemy. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. So, because the city-states, even if they didn't like each other, they were like, guys, we got to do this for Greece. So they unite and they fight against the Persians. So around 498 BCE, the Persians began to invade parts of Greece. The Greeks respond by coming together and fighting against the Persians. Originally, the Persians didn't think that the Greeks stood a chance because the Persians were powerful, they had one strong army, and the Greeks had these all these little mini-armies that weren't ever trained together, so they didn't think that they really stood a chance against the Persians. So, this series of wars between the Greeks and the Persians lasts about 500, uh, 500, 50 years, so half a century, and they are known as the Greco-Persian Wars. Greek Persians fight Greco Persians wars. So, what I want you to consider before you move forward is why do you believe that the Greeks, the city states of Greece, decided to unite against the Persians? They all had their own armies. Why do you think they decided that they ultimately had to unite in order to in order to fight the Persians? Consider the question and make sure you answer it in Google Classroom, and then you can move forward. So, even though the Persians didn't think the Greeks stood a chance, the Greeks stood a chance. Even though the Persians had a powerful united army and the Greeks didn't have nearly as large of an army, the Greeks were able to successfully fend off and defeat the Persians. So, after 50 years of fighting, the Greeks led by the city of Athens. The A city of Athens becomes an important city in this war, in these wars. Able to unite these city-states together and they fight and defeat the Persian invaders. And the Persians are never going to cause them a problem again. This victory was unexpected. It's like the Americans when they defeated the British. They were they were unorganized. They were not as strong as the British army, but they somehow defended their country. Just like the Greeks defended Greece against invaders. This boosted the confidence of the ancient Greeks, and they felt a sense of closeness to one another. Even though they might have had past issues with one another, and they will continue to have issues with one another, they all had that sense of pride of being Greek, because they all came together and they fought off a common enemy. What I want you to do now is you're going to read a little story kind of similar to what I taught you but a little bit more detailed about the greco persian wars you'll answer a series of questions about the greco persian wars i can't speak make sure that when you answer these questions you restate the question in your responses and that you write incomplete sentences and 
that's all you have to do besides the closing summary, which has you summarizing the key ideas of the lesson, which include what you learned from my lecture as well as what you learned from the reading. So you have to bring everything.